They what? did. They did uh, penalize two drivers for laying back. Yep. Good job, NASCAR. Great job. We have to have this. The, this is going to get the attention of the drivers. I, they told me. Um, they told me to start the race. Hey, someone had been penalized in Xfinity for laying back. Stay, stay, t- stay closed up. Is this how? And then when someone had it at the beginning, maybe it was a forty. A- AJ Allmendinger. AJ, they just said, "Hey, they busted the sixteen for laying back. Stay tightened up." Like my team would tell me that. So that's. And then did they get the nine? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. They're they're putting a line in the sand that they're not going to put up with it, and certainly this is what we asked for, and I applaud them for doing this because it had gotten out of hand. We saw how awful that restart was uh, at Kansas at the end with guys laying back, and so uh, I, I like this move certainly, and hopefully it, uh, it it changes some people's mindsets when it comes to you know laying back on restarts. Is this how you set a precedence? You start tagging yep. these guys who are mid pack hoping that it gets to the guys who are in mm-hmm. the front so you don't mm-hmm. have to alter a race by black flagging the guy in second yep. or something. But it's but it's saying that we will do it. Yeah. Yeah, it Chase's car is a a contender for the playoffs. Right. I mean, they're in the owners championship. So they they took it serious by by you know dinging him. So Yeah. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? I know that's a bold question, but it's got that irresistible taste to back it up. Well, when you've got an irresistible match like Zero Sugar and Zero Calories, something sensational is bound to happen. It's like when me and my co-host Jared team up to make a podcast. It's too bad you can't taste with your ears because Coke Zero Sugar tastes so amazing, it's hard to put it into words. But hey, that's my job, at least on Mondays. You have to taste it for yourself. Coke Zero Sugar, the best Coke ever. What did you make of uh, the 19 team's decision to stay out on that sequence that you took the lead? They lost quite a bit of track position. I guess at the end of the day, they, they made most of it back up or, you know, enough. But yeah. I mean, I didn't know where they ran all day because I didn't see them all day except for that time they did stay out and we passed right. them for the Well, they were behind you, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's... You know, I didn't know whether they just had handling struggles or they fought to trying to battle back their track position. I don't know. I mean, how far back did they go? To, I believe 16th, Travis, the far they dropped back. That Maybe sounds a right. Him okay. and him and Busher were, were back there mid, mid-teens. mid Yeah, so they rallied late. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been saying on this podcast for weeks now that I, I just think the 19 team is going to flip a switch and they're going to be there and... You just might as well count on it. Um, I I still believe it. <laughs> I do. I until it until they don't make the next round. I still believe it. Um, I think they were stronger than they their finish yesterday. I will say that. I think that they did get behind on that call. I don't. I don't know. That it was a bad call though. I mean, I guess the result showed that it didn't work out, but. I mean, there was others with two tire calls that it worked well. I guess he was the only one that actually stayed out. Uh, that's that's you're nodding your head like, wait a minute, I was about to correct you. They stayed out. So, yeah, I mean, I saw I saw Martin because I was there was one car between us before we came to pit road. He was very wishy washy. You know, you can tell as a driver when you're looking at the car in front of you, is he pitting or not? You can very you can tell by the body language of the car, like you you know because he's cleaning his tires off. That means he's getting re- getting it ready to go in the pit stall so he doesn't slide, or he's 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 pulling down on the apron, telling you I'm pitting here, I'm pitting. And you could just see with Truex, he was always a half a car wide to the right, like giving himself an option to pull out on the racetrack or pull down pit lane. And he, for the most part, he was lining up and he was going down the bottom. And then I saw him, his car go a little to the right, then back to the bottom. Then it, um, he, he went to the right and he, I don't know how many laps were on our tires. Oh, it was at the end of stage. It was, was in the middle of stage two. One. What? He stayed out. It was at the end of stage one. End of stage one. Okay. Because we had pitted, we had 11 laps on our tires. Because that's, you came out second and you quickly went to the lap to take the lead and think then host of our yep. brought a caution out maybe. Yep. So we were on two, a handful of guys were on two. 
and there was four. And so the problem with staying out is that you need to stay up front. Like you've got, you really got to stay up front uh, because if you get swallowed up pretty early on restarts, it just, it just keeps getting worse. Four tires are passing you every lap. You can't run the line you want to run because you got cars splitting you three wide. And so he needed it to, he probably needed it to go ahead and uh, have a quick caution so he could recover from that. But, um, but yeah, it's just, it's one of those things where they made a call, stay out. This probably seems like a, a great call, genius call. If three or four others stay, I mean, it's that it's just sometimes the, the right call is just dependent on what the others do. It's not your call. It's do others join you in making that decision. And when no one did, that's when it, that's when it could have been, yeah, we probably should have taken tires. I was just curious. I mean, that, that kind of answers this question that I was about to ask. But, you know, is the 19 team right now just overthinking everything based on recent results throughout the playoffs, like trying to, you know, figure out how to get back into that uh, regular season winning form? I don't know. I mean, I, you know, in a few hours in the debrief, I'm going to sit right next night, right, right next to the 19 team. I'm actually, I sit between the 19 and the 45 team. Um, in our Monday meeting. And so I, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if they're overthinking. I, I don't think so. I think that that team's well-led and um, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not sure, but certainly the, the mojo they had is they don't have that. Uh, but it's, I, I don't know. It's just, I feel like this sport is just so week to week that like, you could have 10 bad weeks and if you're a strong team, you can turn it on the next week. Or I just, I feel that way because of me and my team, but, but that's all I know. So I don't know whether that is a real thing on others or not. So, um, but certainly they're, they are, you know, they're struggling to get results. They've gotten unlucky in, in this bad run of races as well. Um, but you know, you look off the, at the playoff grid, they're still right there. They're still plus three. Uh, Larson, Byron, Hamlin, Truex is still the top, top four. We started the, we started the, uh, playoffs, uh, with those four or this round with those four up top and you still got them up top. So, I mean, if there was a team that's going to have issues for just the audio as a fan, James Small, Martin Truex is the, the car that you want to have because their, uh, dialogue in the races is the best to listen to. Is it? Oh, it's. The perfect. I, I saw a clip on, on NASCAR's Twitter, but I didn't open it. And it said that, like, this duo and it had a laughing mo- emoji. What? It's just constant. Like, it, it, they sound like a married couple that is just, like, sick of each other. <laughs> but it's just, like, but that's just how they operate. And that Truex said, like, I shouldn't have listened to you or something, like, <laughs> but I'm not good at that. Like, it's just, they're just perfect. And then James Small with the accent, too, like, just makes it. Yeah, I know it's, that. James is a pretty soft-spoken individual. He, he, he's very soft-spoken. And <laughs> Truex is not shy about saying, I can't f-ing hear you. I can't understand you. You know, and he had to be, you know, to, for him to have an accent and soft-spoken, it's, and Truex is not shy about calling out both. It's just, you know, <laughs> it is laughable. It's it's funny. It is yeah. funny. It's funny because it's not me. It's It's not my situation that's going on. But, they are a married couple for sure. They, uh, you know, they they got that kind of relationship that they're all right with giving each other about stuff that um, maybe Ban- others are not comfortable with. Yeah, banter. Yeah, it's just banter uh, amongst uh, teammates.